Okay, welcome to uh, Robotics 1. In today's class, we will talk about the, the rules for coordinate assignment, and then we will work out the, the forward kinematics uh, for simple robots. In today's class and in the next class, we are going to talk about uh, how to use these coordinate transformation rules and then work out the, the problem. So remember the most important rotation matrix. That rotation matrix is the rotation about Z. So, so if you look at rotation about Z, we have Y axis, X axis, this is X, this is Y. This is Z. And what we are going to do is we are going to rotate this. We always follow right hand coordinate system. Curl your fingers in the direction of rotation. If your thumb is pointing towards the positive Z axis, then the rotation is positive. So we are going to use right hand coordinate system X, Y, Z. Curl your fingers. And as you can see, this rotation is positive. That means the Z1 aligns with Z. And this is the rotation. So this rotation is theta Z. And the rotation transformation. So this is the zero frame, x0, y0, z0. And this is the rotated frame, which is x1, y1, and z1. So the rotation is from the old frame to the new frame, from 0th frame to the first frame. And the rotation matrix is cosine theta z minus sine theta z 0, sine theta z cosine theta z, 0, 0, 0, 1. So please understand, since the rotation of, is about z axis, we have 1 in the diagonal. So think about it like this is x, y, and z. We derived this rotation transformation in last class. Now we are going to look at three-dimensional kinematics. So the robots that we study, they are not planar robots. The, those robots are in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. For an example, let me draw a simple robot. So this robot has one motor here. Then this is the arm. And here, there is another motor. And then here, there is R. And this end, you can have a gripper or maybe a marker or something. So this is called as the end effector. This is motor one, this is motor two. So if you look at this robot from the top, if you look at this robot from the top, you will notice this is something like a, a planar robot. So something like this. So you can look from the top and you will see the top view of the robot or something like, look something like this. But what we are going to do is, we are going to assume this to be a three-dimensional structure. 
and then understand the forward and inverse kinematics. First and foremost thing is assigning coordinate system. So let me give you some rules. So the robots that we study, typically they will have two types of joints. One is a revolute joint that is described something like this. It's like a hinge and there will be an axis of rotation. So this is the revolute joint and then there will be a prismatic joint. So there will be a prismatic joint. And in the prismatic joint, uh, this extra line indicates the direction of actuation. So for an example, this is like a piston cylinder assembly that can go forward and backward. The revolute joint can rotate above this axis. Now first rule of assigning coordinate system is the Z axis must pass to the axis of the joint. What does that mean? It means if I have a revolute joint, then this is going to be my Z axis. If I have a prismatic joint, then this is going to be my Z axis. It does not matter whether the Z is pointing upwards or Z is pointing downwards or Z is going forward or backward for prismatic joints. But Z must be aligned with the joint. So axis of joint must be aligned with Z. So right now, let's look at this robot. This robot is called as R, R robot. And please understand the first revolute joint is perpendicular, uh, parallel to the second revolute joint. So this is R parallel R robot. So there are two revolute joints. First revolute joint is motor one. Second revolute joint is motor two. So I'm gonna first assign the Z axis. So this is going to be my I'm going to call this Z naught and then I'm going to call this axis Z1. And whenever you have a robot, what we want to do is we want to draw something called as the kinematic diagram. Kinematic diagram is sort of the graphical representation of the bare bone robot. So even though your robot may look something like this, the kinematic diagram of this robot would simply be like this. So this is the first joint. Then this is the second joint. And then this is where you have the end detector. So this is the first revolute joint. This is the second revolute joint. Please understand these two revolute joints are parallel to each other. So this is R parallel R robot. Everyone understood this? Now I'm gonna assign the coordinate system. Once we assign the coordinate system, we are going to use the right hand coordinate system. And there are three rules. These rules you must always follow. There are some cases when you have exceptions to the rules, but we will talk about those exceptions a little later. But please understand, the first rule is the joint axis has to be the z-axis. So for rule number one, rule number one, z must pass to joint. Whether it's a revolute joint, it's a prismatic joint. The z-axis has to pass through the joint. So I'm going to draw the first Z axis. This is going to be my Z naught. This is going to be my Z1. And end effector, please understand, at the end effector, there is not a joint. So there is not a prismatic joint or a revolute joint. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume my Z2, something like this. So I have Z naught. Z1 and Z2. Now rule number two. Xn must intersect Zn and Zn minus 1. 
Now, what is the significance of this root? Please understand, we are looking at a three-dimensional kinematics. In three-dimensional kinematics, we are going to have x, y, and z. Whenever we are going to assign x zeros, x ones, and x two, rule number two has to be followed. For an example, remember, if I'm if I'm drawing x one, if I'm drawing x one, x one should intersect z1 and z0. x1, xn should intersect zn and zn minus 1. Everyone understood this? Now let's take a look at the first joint. First joint is a zeroth frame. Where we don't have any minus 1 frame. We don't have x minus 1. We don't have z minus 1. Our first frame is Z0. So in this case, X0 does not matter because we don't have X minus 1 or we don't have Z minus, Z minus 1. So my X0, I'm going to draw something like this. I'm going to draw X0 something like this. And then complete the triad by the right hand rule. So this is, how do you remember? Think about this as a graph paper. This is x, y, z is coming up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to align my x uh, in the positive direction, z in positive z0 direction. And as you can see, my y is going in. Are you with me? This is my y0. Everyone understood this? Now let's look at x1 x1 must intersect z1 and z0. Are you with me so far? Rule number two, x1 must intersect z1 and z0. So now I have multiple choices here. And for this problem, I'm going to show you the choices that we have. So I can draw x1 something like this. Or I can draw x1 something like this. Now let's see what happens if I draw x1 like this. If I draw x1 like this, recognize x1 is intersecting z1. x1 is intersecting z1. But x1 is not intersecting z0. Do you agree with me? x1 is parallel to z0. So, which means the only one possibility where x1 can intersect z1 and also intersect z0 is as if if I draw x1 here. Are you with me so far? This is extremely important. Don't make mistakes in these rules. Otherwise, the forward kinematics will go wrong. So, please understand here we have two choices. I can draw x1 perpendicular to z1 here or I can draw x1 perpendicular to z1 here. But in this particular orientation, this x1 is not intersecting with z0. That's why this is not the preferred coordinate system. So I'm going to draw x1 something like this. Are you with me? If I draw x1 like this, x1 is intersecting with z1 and x1, as you can see, if you extend this, x1 is intersecting with z0. Everyone understood this? And then I would complete the triad. Then I would complete the triad. Thing like this. Are you with me so far? Now, same thing. I need to go to the last frame, which is on the end effector. So end effector, I, I already drew Z2. So X2 should intersect Z2 and X2 must, must intersect Z1. So again, there are two choices. Clearly, this choice will not work. So I need to have X2 something like this. Are you with me so far? And then right hand. And then you have this yt. Are you with me so far? 
So once you assign the coordinate system, this is your zeroth frame, this is your first frame, and this is your second frame. So this is first frame, second frame, or zero frame, first frame, and second frame. Are you with me so far? It is important to note that the rotation of the first joint is theta one, rotation of the second joint is theta two, and end effector, there is no joint, so it remains as is. Everyone understood this? Now I want you to see the next step very, very carefully. So, so right hand triangle. So what we are going to do is, we are going to construct something called as the homogeneous transformation matrix. In this homogeneous transformation matrix, and I want you to understand, this homogeneous transformation matrix would be something like 0, edge 1, where this is the old frame or previous frame, this is the new frame. And this old and new frame, this homogeneous transformation matrix comprises of two parts. So this is a four by four matrix. This is a four by four matrix. And what you have is you have zero R one here, and then you have these translations here, zero, 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 and we have one here. And I would explain what this is. So the idea is when we are going to solve any forward kinematics, we have to form something called as the homogeneous transformation matrix. Homogeneous transformation matrix captures all the information that gives you the relationship, rotational relationship between the previous frame and the next frame and translational relationship between the previous frame and the next frame. So this is a three by three matrix that will capture the rotation transformation. And this is the translation in the X direction between the old frame and the new frame. Translation in the Y direction between the old frame and the new frame and translation in the Z direction between the old frame and the new frame. Once again, I repeat, no matter what forward kinematics problem you solve for articulated robots, you have to find out the homogeneous transformation. Homogeneous transformation is a four by four matrix, wherein this three by three matrix is the rotation matrix that we have seen. And then you will have the translation relationship among X axis, translation in Y, translation Z, zero, 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 and finally you will have one. Everyone understood this? So our job is when we are trying to solve forward kinematics, we have to capture this homogeneous transformation. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to look at how to solve this homogeneous transformation step by step. So please understand, all the rotations here, you agree with me, are about Z axis. The first rotation, the first joint is theta one rotation is about Z. Theta two rotation is about Z, which means you agree with me, at the end, I'm gonna get some form of that rotation transformation. Do you agree with me? because that is the rotation about Z. And we derived this in the previous class. Now, I want everyone to pay attention. For this first problem, I'm gonna go uh, in, in super uh, basic. So first, I'm gonna formulate the rotation transformation, zero R1. Zero R1 transformation, is the rotation of uh, frame one with respect to frame zero. And that is given as 
तो साइन थेटा वन माइनस साइन थेटा वन जीरो साइन थेटा वन तो साइन थेटा वन जीरो 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 वन everyone agrees this is the same rotation transformation that we have derived in previous class can you see that rotation transformation 0 r1 is the same rotation transformation i have written over here however in addition to this rotation transformation you need to take into account something called as the projection so you need to take into account the projection matrix and this projection matrix is very important because this projection matrix tells you the projection of uh, the new frame on to the old frame so for an example your new frame is x1 y1 v1 and this is very important the old frame is x0 y0 z0 so this is your old frame this is your new frame now what i want you to do is i want you to look at x1 can you see that this x1 is in the same direction as x0 do you agree with me x1 is in the same direction as x0 so i have this as 1 0 0 do you agree with me then now i want you to look at y1 y1 is in the same direction as y0 so can you see that this is going to be 0 1 0 now can you see the last one which is z is in the same direction as z2 z uh, sorry z1 is in the same direction as z0 so i have 0 0 1 do you agree with me it is absolutely important for you to understand that the fourth part relates the rotation of the frame 1 with respect to the rotation with respect to frame 0 so please understand once this angle theta 1 changes this frame is going to rotate with respect to this original frame do you agree with me so this rotation transformation takes care of the relative rotation however there is a possibility that x1 of this frame may not align with x0 x x1 may not may be aligned with y0 uh, y1 may or may not align with y0 or x0 so to take into account the relative orientation difference we need to have this projection matrix if you remember in the last class we use the projection matrix to derive the rotation transformation here what we are doing is we are looking at the relationship between x1 and x0 x1 is aligned with x0 so 1 x1 is not aligned with y0 not aligned with z0 y1 is aligned with y0 c1 is aligned with z0 and everything else is zero everyone understood this now here this is an identity matrix can you see that the ones are on the diagonal which means when i multiply this matrix by this matrix i am just going to get this rotation transformation you agree with me this this matrix is an identity matrix pre or post multiply by identity matrix gives you the matrix itself everyone understood this now what i want to do is i want to populate 0 h1 but before i go to 0 h1 everyone understood the rotation matrix the rotation matrix is going to remain the same why because our axis is always going to be z projection matrix could be different in this particular case the x1 y1 and z1 is aligned with x0 y0 and z0 that's why i have an identity matrix if they are not aligned that could be the that matrix could be different and we would look at those cases now here comes the most important part and i want you to pay attention 0 h1 
So I'm going to take the product of these two. The product of these two is cosine theta 1 minus sine theta 1, 0, sine theta 1, cosine theta 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And here I will have 0, 0, 0. And I will have 1 over here. Now, I need to fill in the blanks here. So this is the first, second, and third. So this is the first, second, and third. So there, I need to explain or express the translational relationship. And I want you to understand this very clearly. This is the distance, distance between the new frame and old frame express in old coordinate frame. Now I'll explain in just a second what it means. So I have this robot. I'm gonna say this height of the robot, I'm gonna call this uh, A1. And I'm gonna call this distance from here to here as A2. I'm going to call this distance as A3. And I'm going to call last this distance as A4. And I will transfer these dimensions over here. So this is my dimension A1. This dimension is A2. This dimension is A3. And this dimension is A4. Are you with me so far? Now what I want to do is, Let's start with the frame zero. This is my frame zero. This is my frame one. H zero one. Zero is my old frame. One is my new frame. Now what I want to do is, I want to look at the translational displacement between the zeroth frame and the first frame in the zeroth coordinate system. So what I want you to understand is something like this. I want to express the displacement or distance between the zeroth frame and the first frame expressed in the zeroth coordinate frame. What does it mean? It means, can you see that if I want to go from zeroth frame to first frame, I need to travel A1 units along uh, Z0. I need to travel a1 unit along Z0. Do you agree with me? And I need to travel A2 unit along X0. Do you agree with me? Have you understood this? However, please understand the relationship must be valid for all angles of theta 1. Which means right now, right now, theta 1 is 0. When theta 1 is 0, I see to go from 0th frame to the first frame, I need to go up along Z0 by distance A1, and I need to travel towards the right along X0 by distance A2. Do you agree with me? However, if that theta 1 
is not zero. If that theta one is say five degrees, ten degrees, fifteen degrees, you are looking at this case, right? Which means, if I remember this very very carefully, if theta value theta one is non-zero, I need to travel a two cosine theta along x naught and a two sine theta along y naught. Are you with me so far? Once again, I repeat. And what I have shown here is the kinematic diagram. Kinematic diagram means all the joint variables are zero. Kinematic diagram is drawn when all the joint variables are zero. Right now, I capture this rotation transformation. I capture this position matrix. Now I need to find out the translation between the old frame and the new frame in the old coordinate set system. Old to new in old. Old to new in old frame. So please understand the distance A1 is along V0. Uh, and distance A2 is right now along X0 because theta value is 0. Cosine theta is 1. If that theta value is non-zero, then I want you to look from top, look from top, and I will show you over here. If you look from top now, so look at it like this. We are looking from top. So this distance is A2, and looking from top, you will see that I have X naught, I have Y naught, and Z is coming towards me. So this distance is A2 cosine theta 1, and this distance is A2 sine theta 1. Do you agree with me? Everyone understood this? So what should I write here? This is the X distance. This is the Y. This is the Z. So the distance here is going to be A2 cosine theta 1. Do you agree with me? A2 sine theta 1. And this, the Z distance is not going to change no matter what the value of theta is, right? So this is going to be A1. Everyone understood this? Why do I have this theta 1? Because please understand that these distances, these relationships between two frames, they have to be valid for all the values of theta. If theta is zero, then this term will become zero and I would just have A2 over here. If theta one is 90 degrees, then the first term will be zero and I will have A2 over here. Everyone understood this? Once you formulate the homogeneous transformation matrix, half of the problem is done. Now, what I need to do is, I need to formulate the homogeneous transformation from 1 to 2. Do you agree with me? We first went from 0th frame to the first frame. Now, I want to go from the first frame to the second frame. Everyone understood this? So same logic, what I need to do is 1, R, 2. And this 1, R, 2, again, we will have a rotation matrix and then it will have a projection matrix. The rotation of 1, R, 2, can you see that that rotation, this rotation is theta 2. You agree with me? But this rotation is also about the z-axis, which means the same rotation matrix is going to remain in the second rotation, except this theta 1 will change to theta 2. Everyone understood this? So I will go ahead and I will write this rotation matrix. Cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 2, 0 sine theta 2, cosine theta 2, 0, 
zero zero one. I need to do the same thing. Never ever forget the projection matrix. So you have the new frame. New frame is x two, y two, z two. Old frame is x one, y one, z one. Do you agree with me? So let's look at the projection of x two onto x one. Can you see x two is aligned with x one? You see that x two is in the same direction as x one. So which means I'm going to have one over here zero zero. Y two is aligned with y one. So same case as this, and z two uh, is aligned with z one. Can you see that? Since x two is aligned with x one. Y two is aligned with Y one, Z two is aligned with Z one. Here as well, I'm gonna get an identity matrix. Let me repeat this once again. So, in projection matrix, what we need to do is we need to look at the orientation of the axes. Can you see the new axes is X two, Y two, Z two. X two is aligned with X one. Y two is aligned with Y one, Z two is aligned with Z one. So this projection matrix is going to be an identity matrix just as before. So this will be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, and I'll give you a minute to look at this. Are you with me so far? Any questions here? So since we are multiplying this matrix by the identity matrix, we just get the same matrix. And now what we do is we go and write the expression for one H two. Are you with me so far? We write the expression for one H two, and when we write the expression for one H two, the rotation matrix, which is this one R two, would come here to so sine theta two minus sine theta two zero sine theta two cosine theta two zero 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 one. Zero zero zero. There is one, and again, here, this is the distance about x, y, z. So this is again the distance between frame two and frame. One in first coordinate frame. So what I want to do is I'm gonna go the same way. Please understand this distance. Can you see that this is a three? This distance a three is in the same direction as c two. D two is going up. Everyone agrees. If I want to go from frame one all the way to frame two, if I want to go from frame one to frame two, I need to go in the same direction as B one in uh, a. The distance is a three, so B one, so uh, a three, and then I need to travel horizontally a four. So a four cosine theta. Two should be traveled in x one, a four sine theta two. I need to travel around y one. Everyone understood this? Please understand the relation. This relationship must be valid for all the values of joint variables. So, which means even if theta two uh, is zero, that relationship must be valid. Theta one. Zero. That relationship must be valid. 
no matter what you do, that relationship must be uh, true. So what we do here is, please understand, I'm going to write down what are the distances. Distance is A3. And this A3 is going to be positive. Everyone understood this? Because A3 is in the same direction as Z1. So this is going to be A4 cosine theta 2. A4 sine theta 2. Everyone understood this? Any questions here? Now, what I have is, I have two homogeneous transformations. 0, H1, and I have 1, H2. Do you agree with me? So when I perform the multiplication, 0, H1, 1, H2, this goes, 1 goes. And what I have is, I have 0, H2. Are you with me so far? This 0, H2 transformation, if you look at what we have studied so far, it would contain 0, R2 rotation matrix, 0, 0, 0, 1, and here it will contain the position of the end effector, Px, Py, and Pz. What is Px? Px is the distance of the end effector from the zeroth frame. Py is the distance of the end effector along y in the zeroth frame. And Pz is the distance between the end effector and the zeroth frame along z. Once again, I want you to understand this very, very carefully. Px, Py and Pz are the position vectors. These position vectors are expressed in the inertial or the first frame. This first frame is considered to be a fixed frame. You can't, we are not in robotics 2 where robots are flying. In robotics 1, the zeroth frame is fixed attached to the ground. And we are interested in finding out the end effector position. So Px is the position of end effector along x0. Py is the position of end effector along y0. Pz is the position of end effector along z0. Everyone understood this? So, and with this, forward kinematics problem is solved. Now, depending upon how mathematically inclined you are, you can perform this multiplication by hand or you can use MATLAB to solve this multiplication. But before I, before I go forward, what I want to do is, I want to explain this once again a little bit. So, so if you look at this planar diagram, if you look at the same robot from top, if you look at the same robot from top, what are you going to see? You are going to see A1 and this is gonna, you are going to see A4. Now, this angle is theta 1, right? And then what we have is this angle is theta 2. Now, I want to explain this important part. Now, if you look at from the top view, if you look at from the top view, theta 1 is with respect to the 0th frame. So, this is the 0th frame. This is theta 1. Do you agree with me? Theta 2 is with respect to the first frame. Which means, if this is the frame, this is theta 2. Everyone understood this? So, you have this as theta 1 and this as theta 2. Now, what I want to do is, I want to find out the distance of the end effector 
with respect to the zero frame. This is my zero frame, right? So if I look at the horizontal distance, and I want you to notice this, uh, it is super duper important. If you look at horizontally, can you see that this distance is A2 cosine theta one, right? But if you look at this total angle, if I draw a horizontal line, I have this theta one. This distance is A4 cosine of theta one plus theta two. Will you agree with me? Same thing goes here. If you look at this distance, this distance is going to be A4 sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. Everyone understood this? Which means my Px, my total Px is very important is the distance from the zero frame all the way to the end effector is A2 cosine theta 1 plus A4 cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. Everyone understood this? My Py looking from top is going to be A2 sine theta 1 plus A4 sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. Everyone understood this? And clearly, this is a planar geometry. I can't express V, but V distances are going to remain the same. So it will be A1 plus whatever is the height here. Are you with me so far? A1 plus A3. I repeat once again. And in the next step, what I'm going to do is, I mean, we can perform this math by hand and do the simplification, but MATLAB is easier and MATLAB is the tool of choice. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to explain this once again. And these are the building blocks for AV forward kinematics. As a matter of fact, you have that velocity, uh, you have that position vector Px. If you take the derivative of Px, you get the velocity. Derivative of Py, you get the velocity. Derivative of Pz, you get the velocity. So, so let me repeat once again. This is the most important rotation transformation because our z axis is always going to go to join. So all the rotations we are going to observe will be about z axis. So only rotation transformation that you should remember is this. But please understand, if you have a three-dimensional three-dimensional geometry or three-dimensional robot, convert that into a very simple kinematic diagram. Kinematic diagram is the representation in terms of revolute and prismatic joint. Once you identify the kinematic diagram, remember when you draw the kinematic diagram, the joint variables should be zero. You should not have non-zero theta 1 and non-zero theta 2. You should not have. Theta 1 has to be 0. Theta 2 has to be 0. Think about it. It's like an equilibrium position. So this is the actual robot. This is its kinematic diagram. Once you draw the kinematic diagram, first thing what you should do is you should assign the coordinate frame. You are always going to use the right-hand coordinate frame. Rule number 1. Z axis must pass through joint. You, if you have a revolute joint or a prismatic joint, Z axis must pass through that joint. Whether it goes above, below, left, right, doesn't matter. But it has to pass through that joint. Everyone understood this? Rule number two, Xn. For each Zn, there has to be an Xn. Xn must intersect Zn and Zn minus 1. Xn must intersect Zn and Zn minus 1. For an example, here, this is my 0th frame. I don't have a frame before 0th frame. 0th frame is my first frame. So that's why it does not matter. 
So that's why I have drawn x naught something like this. Do you agree with me? So first I do z z naught z one z two z naught z one z two. You may ask me there is no joint, but why did I draw this going up? If my final end effector frame matches with my previous frame, that makes my life easy. So that's why I assume this z two to be parallel to z one. So I do z z naught z one z two. Now I am on the zero frame. I drew x naught. So then I use the right hand coordinate frame x naught y naught z naught. So I have x naught z naught. Can you see my y naught is going in? Everyone understood this. So this first frame is done. Rotation. Can you see that theta one is about positive z naught? Remember that all the time. Every time your rotations. We are working in the right hand coordinate frame and everything is positive. So curl your finger in the direction of rotation. Can you see it is aligned with Z naught? So which means this frame is done. Let's move on to the second frame. We already have Z1. We need X1. X1 should intersect with Z1 and Z0. So X1 has to be in this direction so that it intersects over here. And this is an infinitely extending arrow. So you can see that Z1 intersects, I mean, uh, Z0 intersects with X1. Can you see that? X1, when you extend, it intersects with Z0. X1 should intersect with Z1 and Z0. That is the rule number two. Zn and Zn minus one. And then you complete the triad. Move on to the next. Similarly, you have z2, I drew x2 like this because x2 is now intersecting with z1 and z2. Everyone understood this? And I complete the triad. Any questions about completing the coordinate frame? Because you are going to use the exact same rule when you use the dh parameters. Yeah. What? But x1, x2, remember, we are looking at the kinematic diagram. Frames are assigned in the kinematic diagram. Kinematic diagram means theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 are all zero. Once they start rotating, we took care of that in the rotation region. But right now, initially, all thetas, all joint variables, all the displacements, they need to be zero. Everyone understood this? Now, First, I need to go from zeroth frame to first frame. So this is the rotation matrix, old, new, going from zeroth frame to the first frame. This is the same rotation matrix, rotation about Z. Everyone understood this? However, you need to multiply this by a projection matrix. What is this projection matrix? This projection matrix gives you the relationship between x1, x0, y1, y0, z1, z0. In this case, x1 is along x0. So the position of x1 is 1, 0, 0. Because x1 is not aligned with y0. x1 is not aligned with z0. x1 is completely aligned with x0. Same thing with y1. y1 is aligned with y0. It's not aligned with x0 or z0. So zero, P one zero. You got this identity matrix. Everyone understood this. The multiplication of this is nothing but your final rotation matrix. That final rotation matrix needs to sit here in the first three by three matrix of homogeneous transformation. The bottom row of the homogeneous transformation will always be zero 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 and one. And here, now I have to fill in the gaps at three locations. This is the distance between the new frame and the old frame in the old coordinate system. So as you can see, that new frame and the old frame is around about A2 cosine theta 1, A2 sine theta 1, and A1. Everyone understood that this is a positive sign, positive sign, and positive sign. Why? Because we are, if we want to go from frame 0 to frame 1, we need to travel 
in the direction of x naught, y naught, and z naught. Everyone understood this? That's why this is positive. Why it's cosine theta 1? Because this relationship has to be valid for all the values of theta. It means even if theta 1 is 0, this should be valid. Even theta 1 is 45, this should be valid. And once we are done with this, this is the homogeneous transformation that captures the entire kinematics. This is the rotational kinematics and this is the translational kinematics. Rotation, translation between the zeroth frame and the first frame. Can you understand this? Now, we have to proceed further and do the same thing from frame 2, from frame 1 to frame 2. So, we have to look at the rotation matrix. Rotation is about Z1. Everyone understood this? So, which means I am going to get the same rotation matrix, except now my theta will be theta 2. Are you with me? Then I need to look at the projection x2, x1, y2, y1, z2, z1. Can you see that x2 is aligned with x1, y2 is aligned with y1, x2 is aligned with x1, y2 is aligned with y1, and z2 is aligned with z1. That's why the projection matrix is an identity matrix. It doesn't have to be, but it is because the way the coordinate system is aligned. Everyone understood this? And then I formulate this homolinear transformation matrix for 1 to 2. We finished 0 to 1. So 0 H1 is done. Now I need to find out 1 H2. And can you see that this is A4 cosine theta 2, A4 sine theta 2, A3. And now I have these two homogeneous transformations. So I have a relationship between the zero frame to first frame, first frame to second frame. When I multiply them together, I get the relationship between the zero frame to the second frame. And you see, I go from zero frame to the second frame. Second frame is where my end vector is located. So this homogeneous transformation matrix which is the product of 0 H1 and 1 H2 comprises of the rotational transformation or the orientation of end effector with respect to 0 frame. Orientation of end effector with respect to 0 frame and position of end effector with respect to 0 frame in 0 coordinate system. Remember, this coordinate system is always in this coordinate system. So, Px is in 0 coordinate frame. Py is in the zero coordinate frame. Pz is in the zero coordinate frame. If you have understood this, this is all there to it in forward kinematics. And what I'm going to do is, we can perform this multiplication by hand, but that is just way too tedious. Uh, but here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this calculation using MATLAB. But before I do that calculation, I just show you that after this calculation, we get the exact same answer. But I just want to explain what is this. Here, since this is like a two pendulum problem, you have a robot, one end, one motor at the front, one motor at the end, so two motors, it's like a, a pendulum, so double pendulum robot. So if you look from top, you are going to see one link, link number one, link number two. In planar problem, you don't have the z distance, but I can find out its x projection and its y projection. You agree with me? x projection is going to be a2 cosine theta 1 plus a4 cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. This is extremely important because the way we have assumed the sign convention, theta 2 starts where theta 1 ends. Do you agree with me? What I'm so for example, I'll explain this to you again. So, so this is the robot. So this is my theta one and this is my theta two. This is my theta one. So once again, this is my first joint, this is my second joint. First, second, link number one, theta one, 
theta two. So which means when I try to find out the complete projection, the angle here is theta one plus theta two. Everyone understood this? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to code this inside the MATLAB. Then I will we will find we'll perform this multiplication and then we will verify that the px, py, and pz's what we get is same as what we got here. So now if you have MATLAB, please start MATLAB. Online students, any question, concerns on the material? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to MATLAB and I will program it. It's a four by four matrix. If you want to multiply two four by four matrix, you can do that, but uh, MATLAB is easier. So, okay, online students, I'm going to switch my screen and I'm going to go on to MATLAB. But before I go to MATLAB, I want to quickly ask you, do you have any questions on the theory so far? Online students. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch my screen. You should be able to see MATLAB. Are you able to see my MATLAB online students? MATLAB, okay. So now, so what are the variables? I have theta one and theta two. So I'm gonna call those symbolic variables, SYMS, theta one, theta two. And then I have uh, these joint variables. So I'm gonna call this A1, A2, A3, A4. Are you with me so far? So theta one and theta two are the first joints, first joint, second joint, joint variable. A1, A2, A3, A4 are the distances. MATLAB variables cannot start with number. So I'm gonna say, 0 h1 i'm gonna write h01 because matlab will not let you 0 h1 as the variable and then this is going to be cosine theta 1 next one is minus sine theta 1 then 0 then i have a2 and I'm programming uh, H, 0 H1, okay? Cosine theta 1, uh, then and so on. Then I have sine theta 1, cosine theta 1, zero, then I have A2 multiplied by sine theta one and so on. So just to make it look nicer, I will try to align them. Then the last one is zero, zero, one. Then I have A1 here, A1, and so on. That shows the continuity, 0, 0, 0, 1. Are you with me so far? Same thing copy, paste, and the difference here is 0, 1, H1, 2, right? 
look at the notes. This is theta two, theta two, A four, theta two, theta two, A four, theta two, theta two, and then I have A three here. So this is my zero H one matrix. This is my zero one H two matrix. And the last part is H zero three is equal to H zero one multiplied by H one two. Uh, yeah, H zero two, correct. H zero two, because we have zero frame, first frame and second frame, right? Yeah. So this is zero H two is equal to Zero H one multiplied by one H two. Are you with me so far? Did you copy down the homogeneous transformation matrices or no? Did I did I type them correctly or not? I typed them correctly. Right. Eight Anyway, I will, I will upload all these slides, the notes, and uh, the video lecture uh, to Canvas. But what I want you to do is, I want you, and I'm going to say simplify, okay? and evaluate selection. And assuming we have not made any mistake, MATLAB would give me a solution. So, okay, somewhere I made a mistake. So let me see. Uh, zero H, H zero one, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's see. H zero one. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, semicolon. So here, here, here. Here, here, here. Okay. Okay. And now this is H02, right? What is my PX? Can you see? This is the relative rotation between the zeroth frame and the second frame, right? The first three by three matrix. Do you agree with me? This first three by three matrix is the relative rotation between the first frame and the zeroth frame and last frame. Can you see Px is A2 cosine theta 1 plus A4 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2? Isn't that we derived a minute ago? Py is A2 sine theta 1, A4 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Are you with me? And last one, Pz is A1 plus A2. Are you with me so far? So this is exactly what we derive from the planar kinematics. Everyone understood this? 
And I want you to get this is the rotation transformation. And I, I just want to tell you the, what is this rotation transformation. Can you see that this matrix is something similar to cosine theta 3 minus sine theta 3, sine theta 3, and cosine theta 3? Remember, it is just like the rotation matrix about Z. But what is the overall rotation? Overall rotation is theta 1 plus theta 2. What does that mean? It means you have this arm. It is an articulated robot. First joint, second joint. First joint rotates by theta 1. Second joint rotates by theta 2. It means the end effector orientation with respect to the fixed joint is going to be theta 1 plus theta 2. And that is what is shown over here. Can you see that? So that is how you will solve forward connection. And from here, performing velocity analysis is also very simple. Because please understand, A4 is a constant. A2 is a constant. A1, A3 is a constant. So if I take the derivative, Clearly, there is no velocity in the Z direction because Z direction the robot doesn't move. However, theta 1 is function of time, theta 2 is function of time. If I take the derivative of this guy, I get the velocity of x direction. So I get Px dot. If I take the derivative of this guy, I get Py dot. So pretty much. Uh, if you look at Niku's book, we have the panematics uh, is described in, I think, chapter 3, or chapter 2, and velocity analysis is described in chapter 4. So, once you understand the coordinate frame, once you understand how to assign uh, the variables, how to formulate the, the homogeneous transformation entities, just use the MATLAB, and this is what is the forward kinematics. This gives you the relative orientation of the end effector with respect to the fixed or the zero coordinate frame. This is the position of end effector, x position with respect to zero coordinate frame, y position, z position with respect to zero coordinate frame. Positive sign means this is in the same direction as x naught, this is in the same direction as y naught, this is in the same direction as z naught. Everyone understood this? This is forward kinematics. In next class, I will solve a few more problems. And then you should be pretty good to, uh, to work on the, the homework. But I would strongly encourage you to take a look at the video lessons uh, that are posted onto Canvas. And then in the next class, we will solve R, R, P, R perpendicular, R parallel to R robot. Uh, and I'm going to stop here. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Any questions online students?